Now, our buddy Andrew Wilkow, who's part of the Blaze, as well as Sirius Satellite Radio, excellent show. He spoke to the mother of fallen Marine Riley McCullum on Sirius XM on Friday. On Friday, the day after this horrific mass killing of American soldiers as well as uh, scores of Afghans. This is going to be tough to listen to. But listen, we should and must. Cut 17, go. My son was one of the Marines that died yesterday. And to listen to that... Sorry, I'm on the radio. No, 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 no. Um, Go go ahead. My son was one of the Marines that died yesterday. 20 years and six months old. Getting ready to come home from freaking Jordan to be with his wife to watch the birth of his son. And that feckless, dementia-ridden piece of crap just sent my son to die. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning to Marines at my door telling me my son was dead. So, to have her on right before me and listen to that piece of crap, talk about diplomatic crap with freaking Taliban terrorists who just freaking blew up my son and know nothing to not say anything about oh my god I'm so sorry for the family so my son is gone and I just want all you Democrats who cheated in the election or who voted for him legitimately you just killed my son with a dementia ridden piece of crap who doesn't even know he's in the White House he still thinks he's a senator so I'm going to try and calm down. I'm sorry. And she'll have to live with that the rest of her life. What happened to her son? Go Go ahead and look up Riley McCullum. See her beautiful son. Not a wife. Was expecting a baby. Look up the others. Look at the two beautiful women. Young ladies. I mean, I can't even imagine how they died with an explosion so big. And you saw some of the video on TV of the street. But ISIS, they tell us, is different than the Taliban. You understand. Al-Qaeda hit us on 9-11, but Al-Qaeda is aligned with the Taliban, which is different than ISIS. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Washington bullcrap. Washington bullcrap. That's what it is. The former vice president of Afghanistan, with others, has formed a resistance in northern Afghanistan. I understand people want to focus on the former president of Afghanistan, who's corrupt. But the vice president the former vice president who's now officially under their constitution, the president. He's not corrupt, he's a fighter. And a resistance is building in northern Afghanistan, and the Biden administration won't even take their phone call. Won't even take their phone call. And yet people say the Afghans won't fight. I told you before, in seven years' time, 50,000 of them died, and they weren't all shot in the back. They died fighting. Ask Joey Jones. Ask Dan Crenshaw. Ask Brian Mast. Ask all of these Americans. Ask retired Colonel Richard Kemp, commander of British forces. They fought the Afghans. They fought to the death, especially their special forces. But when under Biden, the greatest military on the face of the earth, leaves under cover of dark, the Bagrain Air Force, which means they'll have no backup, pulls out the CIA intel, pulls out the contractors, the American contractors maintaining their helicopters and so forth, does it without even talking to that government or military to military. 
the Afghan military knew it was over. They knew it was over. Of Afghanistan students terrified after being told they can't evacuate and their names have been given to the Taliban. Anybody who wanted to get out could get out. That's what the Secretary of State just said 45 minutes ago. Hundreds of students at the American University of Afghanistan have been left terrified for their lives after being denied evacuation from Kabul and told that the U.S. government gave their names to the Taliban. In a stunning report published Sunday, the New York Slimes relayed that roughly 600 students, staff, and their relatives have been left stranded in a safe house in Kabul amid the Taliban's violent takeover of the country, their hopes of evacuation dashed. The group reportedly boarded buses set for Hamid Karzai International Airport on Sunday in a final attempt to flee the country, but after seven hours of waiting for clearance, the group was told to turn around. The airport remained a security threat and civilian evacuations were to be halted permanently on Monday, which they were. I regret to inform you that the high command at HKKIA, that would be the airport, has announced there will be no more rescue flights. Imagine getting that email from American University President Ian Pickford Sunday afternoon. The scholar pilgrims who were turned away today while seeking safe passage to a better future need the help of the U.S. government, who gave them the hope they must not lose, Pickford added. While being instructed to return home, the defeated group received even worse news. Their names had been shared with the Taliban by the United States government. Oh, wow. They told us, we've given your names to the Taliban, recounted Jose, a 24-year-old sophomore, who was aboard the bus on Sunday, were all terrified. There's no evacuation. There's no getting out. Our hopes and dreams have turned into dust. Critics blasted the Biden administration. Amid reports, U.S. officials had carelessly supplied the Taliban with a list of names of U.S. citizens, green card holders, and Afghan allies in an effort to expedite their entry to the Kabul airport. No, says the Secretary of State today. Never happened. It did happen. Meanwhile, the Taliban's promises of tolerance and leniency in the new regime have been coupled with violence against all who associated with Western governments and organizations during the last 20 years. Taliban fighters are hunting down journalists, carrying out revenge executions against Afghans who work with the West. It's going on all over that country. And you know what? It's going on at warp speed now that we're out. I don't believe there's 250 American citizens in enemy territory. I believe there's hundreds more, if not thousands. I don't know that, but I believe it. 